Good everyone and welcome back to the series. Um, today I have again Stephen McGuire with us. How are you Stephen? I'm very well Tom. I hope you're well too. I'm very well, thanks mate. Very well. Today we'll be looking at the deployment diagram inside Enterprise Architect. Um, Stephen, take it away. Thanks Tom. Uh, as always, we start with our perspective which is about um, focusing on what the, the modeling that we're doing. We're going to choose the UML structural perspective because that's where the deployment diagram lives. We bring that up and uh, we can now add a package to the project browser, which is going to house uh, the deployment diagram and uh, the various elements that are on there. So I create a new package, uh, deployment model. Um, I'm going to create um, diagram there as well. So it is a deployment diagram. I select that from the diagram types list, um, create the diagram. And now uh, we're ready to go. Notice that the toolbox has conveniently displayed um, the elements and connectors that are important for the uh, deployment model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start from um, from the sort of persistence tier or or, or the um, the database tier. So we're going to put an execution environment uh, on here, which is going to be a database cluster. So we've got a database cluster there. Let's uh, expand this about, out a little bit because we intend to put a few things um, into this uh, into this execution environment. And we've got two kind of um, two things that we've got going on. We've got we're doing a, a deployment model for a parking meter system. So we've got you know the parking meter um, parking meter itself, and also um, some transactions, the financial side of it, because we're uh, we're, we're receiving payments for. For that so we'll put another execution environment inside that one it's nested conveniently nested in there and we'll call this um we'll call this one a sql server so it's a sql server environment and we'll put another uh one on there for um uh, for the uh the parking meter as well so we're going to put so Stephen, yeah what's 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 the what's the advantage of, of a deployment diagram like why would someone choose to use one yeah, uh, great question, Tom. So what it is is about linking the the work that you've modeled, the things that you're modeling, like components, uh, like applications, databases, uh, and showing where they actually get deployed to. So you know, in this uh, in this modern age that we live in, there are you know all sorts of different uh, deployment types. We can have cloud depo deployments in our own uh, cloud or a hosted. Um, it could be a hosted environment. We could have uh, on premise. Um, on-premise things, and indeed components that are that are uh, deployed to um, smartphones, uh, or in, in our case, um, the parking meter, which is you know situated around our urban environment. But it, it shows um, the relationship between the things, the application components, uh, and the, um, the 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 places that are going to be actually executing the code when it's running. Okay. Yeah. So let's. Um, Let's now drill down into this a little bit further, and let's put a um, let's put a uh, a component on here, which is going to be the actual database um, itself. So the execution environment represents the SQL Server environment. We'll put that on there, and um, we'll reshape that a little bit, and we'll call this the um, call this the transaction uh, database or the parking. Let's call it the parking meter meter DB. And we've got that there. And what we can do is we can use our alternate images. Um, we're going to select an alternate image for this. Uh, we've got a database image in there. Let's put that in and let's just resize uh, that a little bit. And there we've got that. And so it starts to give a bit of visual um, visual understanding for um, for the audience or whoever's reading this to, to understand that it's actually um, a, a database there. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to leave the middle out uh, for a section. I'd like to do this. We're going to put in a um, um, a device here, which is going to be um, the parking meter itself. So we'll put uh, that in as a device, and we'll call it the parking meter. So this represents the physical uh, the, the physical structure that is the parking meter, and and all of the you know electrical and, and um, application things that are inside that. Again, let's. Um, Let's just put an, uh, an image onto that one. So we've conveniently got some uh, images in here of the um, a parking meter. So let's um, put that image in there and we can conveniently resize that as well. So um, that's that's a useful thing to do. We'll put uh, we'll put a, a, a gateway uh, into this as well and we'll make that a node. 
and it's going to be called a, a, a gateway. So when should someone use a, a node versus a device? Right, that's a great question. So the, a, a device is a type of uh, node, but both of them have got um, the, cap the capacity or the ability to, um, to execute um, an application. So, you know, you put an application onto it and it's able to execute that application. A device is usually something um, that is, um, uh, that it, it ha has got other uh, type of attributes, like you might have a, um, a, a scanning thing, which is a device, a printer, which is a device. So they've generally got kind of a different type of uh, a specific type of function, um, but the node is the more is the more general thing. And if you're modeling uh, things like uh, computers or servers and things, then you generally choose um, a node. So that's what we've done here. We'll put a connector between that as well, just using the quick linker there, and we'll say it's an association. Uh, that's good. Now we're going to going to do something else. We want to put an application server in here that's going to be the um, contain the business logic to um, accept the uh, the calls that are coming from um, the parking meter and other things, and they're going to then be um, transmitting that and communicating with the database here. So to do that, we use a UML um, stereotype, and I can just conveniently enter this in here. I'm going to call it um, an application server. So what's the purpose of a stereotype then? Uh, a stereotype is a is a mechanism to create a sort of a family of family of things. So if you you know imagine that you were you were working uh, in aeronautic um, you know aerospace kind of um, area, <clears throat> you might have a whole lot of uh, aircraft and things. Now you don't want to every time you create an aircraft, you don't want to kind of have to label that thing that this is a type of aircraft. So you create a stereotype that um, represents a family of things. In that case. Um, in that case, it's a, an aircraft, and then you can put in the specifics of, um, you know, of an aircraft, whether it's a, a Boeing or a, um, uh, you know, or, or one of the um, aerospace ones. So this one, we, we, we're wanting to put in an application server because it's something that we might use um, regularly. And then we want to say that it's of, of, of type uh, node. So we can look, look at this list here and we can uh, scroll down until we get to node. We can say it's a node. And if we want, we can add um, descriptions there that describe what. The application service is about but we'll save that um close that and now we'll drop another node onto the uh onto the diagram and uh we'll call this the um payment server uh what have we got there that's the parking meter we'll call this the meter management um Uh, so that's there and you notice now that I can go into here now and look at my stereotypes and choose application server there. So we're reusing that stereotype and Tommy won't just use it this time. It's something that we might use uh, lots of times for lots of in, uh, lots of different uh, deployment environments. Um, there it is there. We're going to make a connection um, again between these two nodes association and we're going to connect this to um, we're just going to connect it to the database uh, cluster and we'll make that an association and we can put labels on on these so we can put that this is um, HTTPS and also we want to say that the direction is uh, bi-directional so we've got you know some uh, bi-directional activity going on there <clears throat> I'm using my control key just to expand this application server out a bit so that the stereotype can be seen so that's kind of convenient as well and I will use an alignment tool just to say, look, let's line um, all of these uh, things up. I'll, I'll take this one out and I'll just use the layout ribbon to um, align those uh, like that. And so uh, that's the kind of basic uh, things that we're doing in this uh, diagram. We've got a lot more things to do, um, Tom. So um, one of the things that we uh, might want to do is look at a um, some sort of deployment here. So if we've got this uh, meter management uh, application server here. Now we might want to have a component, which is the um, meter management system. So that's a component and we can actually use one of the relationships here, uh, here which is um, the deployment relationship. So we can uh, put that on there. And that's quite uh, that's quite useful. And the other thing we can do is if there's some complications around or some you know some complexity around the deployment of that, we can put a, a, a deployment um, specification uh, on there as well and call this the 
uh, the meter management specification for the deployment. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll leave it at that, and we can then um, you know link that uh, to this one here, and we can um, manifest it by. So let's do that. And so Ooh. now, now we've that's, got that's, that. That's different. We we haven't seen a connector joined to a connector before. No, it's a it's an incredibly useful thing because uh, you know the connectors while they just look like a, a a line, and if you were using just a normal drawing uh, package, you don't have this kind of sophistication. Um, but what what that that line represents, you know, something uh, with lots of semantics about it. So it might be that we want to uh, do this on other occasions as well to be able to say, you know, what what is the what what things are important in that line and that line can have all sorts of other uh, information about it as well it can you know have um you know constraints and tags and things but in this case we're using this deployment specification to uh describe to someone that's going to deploy this uh what you know what the the requirements the constraints the specification is about how that needs to be um needs to be deployed so that's like so much more detail you can get out of that as opposed to just using a, a notes field as, as well that's right. I'm an whole element behind it. That's exactly right. And if I wanted to, I could link uh, a document uh, to this as well, so that we could bring up a much, a much richer, uh, much richer interface as well. So, um, there's some of the basic elements. We're going to move on now and um, and complete this diagram. Oh, so we need a bit of magic, do we? We do. All right, here we go. Oh, cool. Look at that. Yes, uh, we've done a little bit of work uh, in the, in the background. Much of uh, which we saw before, it's just filling out some of the details, adding in some extra things. So what we actually uh, added in this, and I'm just going to um, use my hold my control key down and use my mouse wheel just to to zoom in. I'm going to use the pan and zoom window just to to move around. So that's one of the the um, good features for large diagrams. So what we what we added was a smartphone um, app, and remember we can set an alternate image uh, for that, and we've done that. Uh, and we've also got a deployment of a smartphone app. So Tom, this is the, again, one of the things I really want to get across in these uh, videos is uh, a novice modeler might just say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on. A more advanced modeler um, could could put on a, a link on this and then link through to, uh, to the development work that's been done on the smartphone app. Uh, that's a topic for another video, but what I could do is just, uh, drop, you know, drop a, a uh, hyperlink onto this and link through uh, to that work. And so it, it connects all the, you know, connects all the things up right from, you know, the, the, um, the strategic sort of modeling and uh, things right down to this deployment level. Um, the other thing we added was a payment server. So again, we reuse that uh, that stereotype again, the application server stereotype. Uh, and of course, we added another execution environment for the transactions uh, and uh, and a database as well. So the other th thing we added here was the um, administration workstation. So this is, you know, someone uh, in the urban, uh, in the, you know, the council uh, offices or wherever managing the parking meters um, and they're using a desktop um, application there as well. So. You can see how the use of some of those images brings this diagram uh, to life and makes it uh, makes it sort of more more meaningful. You can you know immediately see um, understand that the cylinder represents a database. You can see the um, the various um, you know user interfaces there as well. Um, so uh, again, Tom, a, a very useful diagram uh, that describes the deployment of uh, the components uh, and applications. Uh, to an environment that's going to execute them. Mm, it look, looks like this diagram would be quite good when you know, dealing with stakeholders, like if you were the project manager for this parking meter system and you wanted to communicate how it was all put together with um, maybe the council or looking to do that, then uh, something like this is a, a very clear and easy way of describing you know, what components are going to be there. Uh, using the alternate images like you have uh, makes it very easy for someone to understand so they don't need to know what the the different semantics for the boxes and lines mean. So yep. I think yeah, it's a, uh, as you said, a really compelling diagram for for communicating what is going to be deployed. I guess. Yeah, that's right, Tom. And where 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 it comes to life, I think, is uh, when you've got 
situations where people are migrating things to the cloud. So part of this could be, uh, you know, on a cloud environment and part of it could be on premise. And uh, Enterprise Architect has a very uh, rich uh, set of um, sort of icons and images uh, for the resources for, you know, the big cloud environments, the, the Google Cloud, the Microsoft Azure and the Amazon AWS. And so uh, we haven't done this on this diagram, uh, but you could show what things are on premise, what things are in the cloud and show the, the connection between them. And so, as you said, for a project manager or someone trying to describe to uh, to an audience, you know, which things uh, are our responsibility and which things are, are being managed by the cloud, uh, it, it, you know, it's very illuminating and um, a very compelling diagram just to show those different uh, responsibilities as well. And not to let's not forget as well what we talked about a little bit earlier about these um, these deployment specifications as well, because, uh, you know, I, I've been around the industry, you know, quite a long time, Tom, as, as you have. And, you know, I've seen lots of things uh, go wrong with deployment because the specification hasn't been detailed properly and the people that do the deployment um, you know, simply um, don't have the right instructions to follow or make decisions themselves. Whereas this deployment spec ensures that uh, the right decisions uh, are being made about that deployment. Ah, very good, very good. Well, uh, thank you everyone very much for your time again today and joining us uh, on this video on, on deployment diagrams. Um, please uh, drop a like, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section. Uh, we'll, we'll answer every question that gets uh, popped into there. Uh, again, thank you very much, Stephen, for, for joining us today and uh, look forward to the next one. Always a pleasure, Tom.